Today I'm going to go over several art of defense techniques. These techniques are very important when defending against an attack. Most games are won by attacking, but some are won through correct defense. If you can defend correctly, then you can win many more games. Today's game is from the World Blitz Championship in 2015. It was played between Magnus Carlsen and Sergei Karyakin. I wanted to feature a game between these two great players since they will be playing each other in the World Chess Championship next month. Let's go ahead and take a look at this game. Magnus Carlsen is playing the London system here, which is very solid. And he decides here to go ahead and uh, take the knight on c6. The idea behind this move is to reduce black's control over the very important e5 square. Magnus is now going to place a knight there and long term can make this bishop very bad. Black would like to dislodge this knight and play e6 to e5 to get the bishop into the game. If black is unable to do that, then the bishop on c8 will become very passive and could be a restricted piece for a very long time. Therefore, Karyakin plays queen out to c7, and his idea here is to play the knight back to d6, play f7 to f6, and dislodge the knight. Magnus, goes, Magnus sees that and decides to go ahead and play the knight back to d3 in order to get the knight out to the really great outpost on c5. The following attacking sequence from Sergei Karyakin is just brilliant. He plays knight out to g4. Now this move looks dubious at first, but in fact it is quite good. Let's take a look at the different ways that white could respond to this. If white tries h3 to kick the knight back, then black can simply take here on d4, threaten checkmate in one move. So white must capture the knight back. And then black can simply grab a second pawn on e3, and because he is attacking both of the knights, black will be able to win one of them back, and uh, simply remain up by a pawn. So black is up by a pawn here in this endgame. He has a bishop versus a knight, and he could trade off the really weak a6 pawn for white's uh, c3 pawn and win here in the endgame. So therefore Magnus Carlsen does not want to go into that, and a voice playing that. Let's take a look at a different possibility. If Magnus were to play f4 here, then knight takes e3 and that just loses a lot of material there. So what about knight to f3 in order to defend the h2 square? Well, that doesn't quite work out either because then e4 comes and of course if the knight move were to move away to d2, queen takes h2 would be checkmate. So white must play move like h3, or he's going to lose a lot of material. But even so, he will lose at least a pawn. And then if he does capture on f3, which is not a good idea, then bishop to h3 would win at least the exchange. There are threats of checkmate as well with queen out to g6. Therefore, white will probably play uh, king to h1 in order to have rook to g1 to stop that checkmate. But then black is simply play queen h6 and have all sorts of discovered checks and white is just completely losing here. So that is not a good idea. Let's take a look at what happened in the actual game, which is g3 and that is the very best move. Queen h6 and h4. Now, although it is often not a good idea to push the pawns in front of the king, here it is the best way to deal with black's attack. This is another really important chess lesson. You cannot always follow the rules of chess. You have to play the best moves. And the best moves here are, paradoxically, to push the pawns in front of the king. Rook a7, just bringing in some reinforcements for the attack. And white now plays knight h2, which is a really great idea. When you are defending, trading off material can be of great benefit to your position. The knight on g4 is a great attacking piece for black and would do really well on f3. White's knight, on the other hand, has a very difficult time defending these kingside pawns. White's rooks and queen are much better suited to defending the pawns. 
Therefore, Magnus wants to trade off his weak defender for one of Black's great attackers. This trade will make Magnus's defensive task much easier. And this is a very important defensive concept to remember. So, knight takes h2. Now, Karyakan knows that his knight is better, but he goes ahead and takes on h2 in order to be able to make use of this pen on the h file and basically bust open white's pawn structure on the king's side. And it looks like that white is completely lost here. However, white is just fine and according to the computer is only slightly worse. There are three key art of defense techniques that Magnus could use here to keep the game equal. Go ahead and pause the video and study this position and think about what Magnus should play. When you are ready, unpause the video and we will go over the various techniques. Alrighty, so the correct move here. Well, Magnus first of all played rook out to h1, which is not a good move. Now the idea here is that if black were to take on h4, which he does, then white's idea was to play the king back to g1 and make use of this pan on the h file in order to play rook takes h4. But black can simply play h3 and then white's position is very, very bad. As you can see here, the rook on h1 is passive and doesn't have very many squares to go to. The king on g2 is not very well placed either. Black has ideas of queen to h5 to f3 and then queen to g2 checkmate. So white has to watch out for those ideas and black is just doing really, really well here. So we're going to look at that in a minute. But first, let's look at uh, what white should have played here. Instead of playing rook to h1, h5 is the correct move. Now, it seems like that black can just easily win that pawn, you know, just play uh, g4 here, and white loses the pawn. But if black does play g4, then this bishop on c8 can no longer attack the white king. And this is the defensive principle of a restricted piece. Magnus, by playing h5, would indirectly restrict black's bishop if black plays g4. And the following moves could be played, you know, rook to h1, queen takes check, king to g2. And as you can see here, it would be very, very difficult for black now to attack the white king. Also, white can win back the material by capturing on a6, so white's not going to be down any material here either. Alrighty, so if black does not want to play g4 because he does not want to leave his bishop out of the attack on the king's side, and maybe black plays some other move, let's just say king to h8, then white can play this other really great defensive technique, and with rook to h1, he's simply going to reinforce the pawn in h5 and close down the h file, prevent black from opening it up, and this is a really good defensive technique called closing up the game. That's essentially what white is going to do here. Black could try f4, king g2, and maybe try something like f uh, f4, f5 to f4, and then white could simply play g4 and close up even more files, and that is a really great defensive technique to reduce the attacks against your king and to make it much easier to defend. In addition to that, we can see that white is able to buy time here by slowing down black's attack, and that brings up the third defensive technique of counterattack. White is going to be able to play knight takes a6, win the a pawn, and then put some pressure against the c6 pawn, and thus have counterattacking chances, which would really, really be good and help him defend his king. All right, so those are the three defensive techniques that are very important, and let's uh, take a look at what happened in the actual game. Magnus missed the h5 idea and instead played rook to h1 and is quickly going to get into trouble here. He tries knight takes a6, but black simply plays rook to a7 and forces the knight away. And then by trading off the rooks, forces the queen away from these light squares, so that way black is able to quickly gain access to the light squares, and white is now going to have a very difficult time defending this. Yeah, rook to g1 just to stop the queen out to g2 checkmate, and as we can see here, white's pieces are pretty tied up. Uh, white's king cannot move, the rook cannot move, and the queen cannot move off of the second rank. 
So therefore, Magnus decides to try and create a pass pawn over here on the queen side to have some counterplay. Now that is a good idea, but unfortunately for Magnus, it doesn't really work out too well. Simply rook takes b4, and if Magnus were to capture the rook, then queen f2 check, and this would be checkmate. So therefore, Magnus cannot move the queen off the second rank, and he drops his pass pawn. So really, really great play by Karyakin here to bring home the win. And Karyakin, well, this was a blitz game, so they're playing very fast here. But Karyakin actually had an easier way to win this than what he actually played. Uh, let's take a look here. Karyakin could have played rook to a1. And if the rook takes, then of course checkmate. And if the queen takes, then we have this other checkmate that we just saw a few minutes ago. So, yeah, but instead rook to a6, and after queen c2, rook e6, and Magnus resigned. The only uh, square where the knight can go to where it's not captured immediately is on c7. But then after rook to c6, the queen cannot capture, and black is able to win a piece there. So therefore, after rook to e6, Magnus Carlsen resigned. Really, really great game by Sergei Karyakin, 2015 World Bliss Championship. And this game really highlights the how important it is to know key defensive concepts. If we take a look back here, Magnus Carlsen could have played h5, and this would have utilized the counterattack the technique of defense. And if g4 was played, it would have used the restricting your opponent's pieces defense because this bishop is now no longer able to attack the white king. And if uh, king to h8, in order to try and attack a different way, then white can play rook to h1 and close down this file, and then close down this uh, as well, and make it to where that it's very difficult for black to attack the white king. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.